How's it going, you awesome bunch of bakers? Hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'll show you how to make scones, clotted cream, and jam all in one video. So let's get in the kitchen and get started. Here in the UK, scones with clotted cream and jam are a classic afternoon tea treat. You can get them anywhere from your nan's kitchen to pubs, restaurants, and fancy hotels. A scone is a humble little pastry. It is neither bread nor cake, but something in between. It is light and crumbly, but also sturdy enough to withstand a good smearing with a thick and clotted cream. Clotted cream is a very thick version of double cream or heavy cream. It is extremely rich, but most importantly, it is spreadable. There are a few methods that can be used to make it at home. One of them involves baking it in the oven for 12 hours. We're not going to do that. I will show you two ways to make it, both quick and easy. And of course, the final part of the equation, the jam. I made strawberry jam, but you can use any berries that you like. All three elements of this treat are super easy to prepare and take very few ingredients. Even if you have never made any of them, you will be able to after watching this video. So let's get right to it. Let me show you how it's made so you can make yours. We'll start by making the clotted cream. It only contains one ingredient, double cream, also known as heavy cream. Use the fattiest cream that you can find. As you can see, mine is 50% fat. The fattier, the better. If you cannot find very fatty cream, you could add some butter to it to make up the difference. Okay, the first method that I'm going to show you is the boiling method. Pour the cream in a pan, filling it up no more than one third of the way. If this boils over, it'll ruin your day. Okay, place the pan on medium heat and let it cook for 15 minutes. Keep an eye on it and stir it once in a while. It will bubble up and rise up quite a lot. If it starts boiling too vigorously and rising too high, Turn the heat down a bit. Our aim is to reduce the cream by half and make it nice and thick. At first, it will boil vigorously. Later, it will become all swampy and thick. Once it starts sputtering uncontrollably, it's ready. You should be able to easily draw a line in it using a spatula, just like this. Now pour it into a jar, cover it up and leave it in the fridge until it's completely cooled down and set. That is one way to make clotted cream in 15 minutes. The second method is even easier and quicker but you do need a microwave for it. Pour the cream in a wide bottom bowl, once again not filling it up more than one third of the way, otherwise it will boil over. Pop it in the microwave for four minutes on medium to high power. During this time, it will get nice and hot. Give it a quick mix, a quick shake, pop it back into the microwave for another four minutes. During the second time, it will start boiling. To prevent the cream from burning or drying out, grab a spatula and scrape the sides of the bowl down and give it a quick mix. Now we need to microwave it one last time for another four minutes. And this is how it should look when it's done. It should be nice and thick and have a yellow color. And there you have it. 12 minutes later, we have clotted cream. Of course, we need to wait for it to cool down, but at least we didn't have to cook it for 12 hours in the oven, right? Okay, let's move on to the jam. And it contains only three ingredients, strawberries, sugar and some lemon juice. The lemon juice is there to preserve the color of the strawberries. As I mentioned earlier, you can use any berries that you like. Make sure to cut them nice and small, because sometimes they will not disintegrate very well as they cook. Combine all three ingredients in a pan. I'm using the same pan that I used for the clotted cream. Place the pan on medium to high heat and cook the strawberry jam for around 20 minutes. Kind of like with the clotted cream, at first it will boil vigorously. It will be loose and watery, but once all the tiny bubbles become bigger and the liquid starts reducing down, we'll get closer to our jam. This too must be stirred once in a while to prevent it from sticking to the bottom of the pan. And just as with the clotted cream, you can tell when it's ready using your spatula. If you can easily draw a line in the jam without it closing straight away, you know it's done. And this is how it should look. If you sterilize your jars, you could keep this jam for a very long time. But I'm far from an expert on those matters. I don't store my jam. I make a small amount, I eat it, and I'm done with it. You probably know better than me when it comes to these things. Okay, this also needs to go in the fridge to cool down and set completely. Let's see what we need for the scones. We want them to be nice and light, so we're using plain flour. We'll also need some milk, butter, salt, baking powder, sugar. We'll need half an egg for the dough. The other half of the egg will be used for glazing. Make sure the oven is preheated before you even start weighing out your ingredients. Set it on 200 degrees Celsius, 390 Fahrenheit, fan off. Sometimes the fan can make them go wonky, so we don't want to use it this time. Okay, to make the scones in a large bowl, combine the flour, the sugar, the salt and the baking powder. Give it a quick mix and then add the butter pieces, which should be cold. Then take the butter piece by piece and break it up into smaller pieces. Keep doing this until the mix becomes nice and sandy. 
If you have a food processor, use it. It'll be quicker and easier. If you're going to do it by hand like I am, it'll take around 3-4 to four minutes. Once the mix looks like this, we can continue by adding the wet ingredients. Combine the milk with the egg before pouring it into the crumble mix. Gluten is our worst enemy in this recipe, so we want to do everything that we can to avoid mixing this dough for too long. Grab your dough scraper and mix until it's just combined. It will be very sticky and loose, but don't worry, that's normal, that's how it should be. Once all the dry flour has disappeared, dust the dough generously with flour and dust your table as well. Then scrape the dough out on the floured surface. Next, use your hands to shape it into a round ball. We're not trying to knead it here, we're just trying to press it together and to make it relatively smooth. Be nice and gentle. Roll it around to cover the whole surface with flour and to make it nice and smooth. Now flatten the dough to about 3 cm or 1.2 inches thick. You can do this by hand or with a rolling pin. I'm going to be using a 5 cm or 2 inch wide cutter. You can cut your scones larger or smaller, it's up to you. Try to cut as many as you can on your first go. The first batch will always be the lightest. But I will show you how to make them nice and light, even from the trimmings. The trick once again is not to work the dough too much. Instead of kneading it or squeezing it, simply push it together from the sides in. Once you have closed up all the holes, turn the dough on its side and then flatten it out. You see we hardly worked it at all. Now cut a couple of more scones and then repeat. You should get two from the second batch, then another one and one more at the end. Eight scones in total. Place it on a non-stick paper lined baking tray. Use the brush to remove any excess flour and then glaze them with the other half of the egg. And by the way, you don't have to make them round. You can cut them in squares if you want or in triangles, it's up to you. Or whatever you do. After glazing, these bad boys are ready for the oven. They will take around 18 minutes to fully bake. Place them in the middle of the oven, closer to the heating element. You should always do this when you're baking something that's not very tall. Okay, these bad boys are done and don't they look beautiful. Even the ones made out of trimmings turn out decent. All we need to do now is leave them to cool down slightly and then tuck in. So let's just admire what we just made. Scones, clotted cream and jam. All with our own hands. The scones are light and delicate yet sturdy. They are slightly sweet and have a beautiful color. You don't need to use a knife, you can easily crack them open with your hands. The clotted cream was the most surprising thing to me because I had never made it before. It turned out so thick and rich. It's like cream and butter had a baby. Seriously good stuff. And last but not least, the strawberry jam. It has an intense strawberry flavor and a beautiful color. And the texture is ideal too. Perfectly spreadable. All three elements, perfectly great by themselves. But when we combine them, we get something really special. If you've never tried scones with clotted cream and jam, you're definitely missing out. Now that you know how to do it, get in the kitchen and make yourself some. So what do you think of these recipes? Do you like scones with clotted cream and jam? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. But that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.